Hello everyone and welcome. A few weeks back I did a review of a compact automotive OBD2 scanner. That unit was a perfectly good mid-range OBD2 scanner. It had a lot of nice features and functionality for that price point and for the average person. But today we're going to look at a more full function OBD2 scanner that has a lot more features and functionality built into it. If you really want to be able to read trouble codes, find problems, and reset many of the modules in your modern car, then this is a scanner you want to be looking at. So let's get into it. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews plus helpful DIY projects, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product review video or DIY video. Alright, so let's see what we have here. There's a shot of the box for you. And let me open this puppy up and we'll see what we have. Alright guys, so when you unbox this package, this is everything you get. You get the scanner itself, it already has the OBD2 cable attached to the scanner, and you get a USB cable already included in the package. I already untangled it and plugged it in, so you're now looking at a blank screen as I'm talking to you guys. And you get the owner's manual, which comes in a lot of different languages, so anybody out there should be able to read through this, get acquainted with it, and figure out how to work this unit. So don't lose this, you're going to need it, it has a lot of important information inside. So this is the ThinkCar ThinkScan S6 Automotive OBD2 Scan Tool, available on Amazon, link in description below. At the making of this video, this unit retails for $209, but they do have a $15 discount coupon on Amazon Pay, so it goes even below $200. That is pretty good price right there for a unit that can do as much as this one can do. The unit only weighs 0.8 pounds, so less than one pound. It is eight inches wide by six, five inches width and only one inches in thickness. So it's a very compact, easy to handle unit, as you'll see later on. It can be powered up, like I said, through the 12 volts through your car going through the OBD2 cable, or you can power it up from the USB cable that's already included. And that's convenient if you want to do things in the settings, in the adjustments, anything you want to do in here, look up trouble codes, whatever you want to do away from your vehicle so you don't always have to be connected to the vehicle to be able to power up the unit. Because you can separate this from the vehicle and use it on your Wi-Fi. You can go on the internet, look up trouble codes, all that kind of good information, do updates, all that kind of good stuff. It is based on the Android 10 operating system, and it has a touchscreen, which is very convenient for anything you need to do. No messy keyboard to have to worry about. You press whatever you want to do, and it goes right to it. We're not plugged into the vehicle yet, so it won't do any of the things that you want it to do. But you get the idea. I'm going to plug it into the vehicle in a moment, and then we'll be able to have full functionality. The updates, like I said, you can do that through your Wi-Fi and you get lifetime free updates. So you don't have to pay for the updates down the road. And the updates are very, very simple. Unlike some other scanners that you need to plug into your computer and have the computer download the software and then do it to the update, do it back onto the system inside the uh, scanner and so forth. None of that messy stuff. It downloads right from their website, right onto the scanner and it unpacks it and does everything internally. Nothing for you to do. All you do is click the update button and that's it. It goes from there. Now this OBD2 scanner has the capability of reading fault codes, clearing the fault codes, retrieving vehicle info, and displaying live stream data for the four main control modules that it has built in, which are ABS, transmission, SRS, airbag, and the engine control module. It can also reset five major functions in your vehicle like the engine oil light, the steering angle sensor calibration, the electronic parking brake, TPMS reset, and throttle body relearn. It has auto VIN lookup and DTC or diagnostic trouble code lookup. Some of the functions that it has built into it are battery health tester, IM readiness, it reads live data stream, freeze frame, vehicle info, O2 sensor testing, and it can erase trouble codes. It works on all 1996 and newer American, Asian, European, Indian, Malaysian, Australian, and Iranian cars and light trucks. I looked this up the moment ago when I unpacked it and I went through some of the settings because I had to set up the Wi-Fi to be able to get to this screen. The first screen you see is you must put in your Wi-Fi code. 
And I saw so many vehicles in there I never heard of. It's amazing how many vehicles this little guy here can cover. So that is basically it. When you do plug it in, the minute you turn it on, whether you use the USB cable right here or plug it into your vehicle, it will start asking right away for your Wi-Fi connection signal. And that's the smart thing to do. Have all your Wi-Fi info ready when you get this guy and you unpack it. That way you can get it hooked up and start doing your update. Update the software, update the modules, update the vehicles you have, all that kind of good stuff so you're getting the latest information. So let's go ahead and do some testing on a vehicle and see what this guy can do. All right, guys, before we connect this puppy to the vehicle and see exactly what it can do and what information it can tell us, a couple things I wanted to point out. Some things are obvious, like the shape of the scanner. This scanner has a really cool design, a built-in handle. Whether your hands are dirty, oily, greasy, whatever, you don't need to worry about holding the scanner and trying to type on it, having it slip out of your hand, whatever. One hand can get a firm grip on the scanner, and you don't need to worry about losing control over it. Another thing is we already know it can talk to four major functions, your engine, your transmission, your airbags, your ABS, all that kind of good stuff. That's really important good stuff that a lot of scanners will not do. Most scanners out there will talk to the engine and possibly the transmission, but the airbags and the ABS are not always included. But this unit also has reset functions. And some of you may be scratching your head thinking, what's the point of these reset functions? What do I need them for? Well, vehicles have become more and more intrusive with the computers controlling everything. In the old days, you could just open the hood and look at the dipstick and see what the oil looked like or what the transmission oil looked like and go from there. Now you can't do that. Even changing the brakes, you can't do that. You have to talk to the built-in computers, built-in modules to have them tell you what's going on or have them allow you to make a change. So that's what this unit allows you to do, like the engine oil reset. Some vehicles do not have dipsticks, and the ECM is what controls or monitors the engine oil life. So when the ECM tells you it's time to change the oil, after you change the oil, what do you do? You have to reset it. You have to tell it you changed the oil. This is what this unit can do. It talks to the ECM and communicates the fact that you already changed the engine oil in time to reset it and start monitoring it again with a fresh new batch of oil. The electronic parking brake, for example. Some vehicles, you cannot calibrate or change the parking brake by yourself. It is controlled electronically. So if the parking brake is too loose, you need this to reset it so it'll relearn where it needs to set itself. Or if you need to change the brake pads, you need this to tell the ECM that you're going to change the brake pads. You either open it up or close it back and it'll relearn where it needs to be. That's where the reset function comes in. Your throttle body, for example, if you clean the throttle body, if you replace the throttle body, if you repair the throttle body, it needs to be told that you made these changes and eliminate any faulty memory that's in the ECM so it'll relearn and figure out exactly how the throttle body should be working. Otherwise, you're going to get stumbling and stalling and problems like that. So this baby right here can help you with that. Your steering angle, you do an alignment on the car or something like that, and your steering wheel is off to one side, so the vehicle's going straight, but the steering wheel's pointing sideways. This guy right here can reset and cause a relearn function of the steering angle, so you can get your steering wheel back in the direct angle where it's supposed to be. And your TPMS, your tire pressure uh, monitoring sensor. What happens if you change rims, you change tires, your uh, battery goes out inside the TPMS, you need to replace it, put a new one in, etc. Well, a miscommunication between the TPMS and the ECM can create all sorts of havoc for you. You don't want all those lights blinking telling you there's something wrong. This baby right here can cause a relearn function, reset it all, and have everything working properly again. So those are the main functions that this guy, it may seem like a simple little reset functions, but this guy can really help you eliminate a lot of headaches that can pop up in your modern vehicles. The older vehicles don't have those problems, but the new ones, everything is being controlled by the computers. So let's hook it up to the vehicle and see what it can tell us. Okay guys, so here we have the scanner hooked up to the vehicle and you can see right there, this is your front screen where you have everything easily accessible at your fingertips. You can go into settings right here and get everything set up. And, you know, you can select what you want to do from there, set up, you know, brightness, measurement units, time zone, all that kind of good stuff. So it's very easy there. And you go back, you have updates, you can go through there and do whatever update you want to do, whether it's the software or the vehicles, and it'll select whatever is convenient for you. Like I said, as far as update, you click the one button right there and that's it. 
You don't need to hook this up to anything. Right now, I am in my garage, and this is hooked up to the vehicle. If I were to notice, let's say I was doing an Aston Martin, and I noticed, oh, there's an update available. Before I start working with this unit, let me update the software. I don't even need to leave the car. I can update it right here, right now, that easily. So that's how easy this is. Let's back out. And there's your repair info. You can create a file of everything, maintenance and service. Those are the features that we discussed earlier. Right there, you see the brake, ECM, oil, TPMS, all that kind of good stuff. If your vehicle needs these resets, you just click on the button and you can do it. Now, my vehicle doesn't have these resets built into the computer. My vehicle does all this manually, so I don't need to do this on my vehicle. But there are many modern vehicles, a lot of GMs, BMWs, Mercedes, that they actually need to be able to use these to be able to do any work. So there you have it. So the main thing for me would be to either scan or use OBD2 to be able to communicate with the vehicle. So let's go to OBD2 and see what we can do. And it'll connect via serial mode to the vehicle. All right, so then it goes to a screen that tells you all sorts of things about your vehicle. And you can go through there and check out everything that you want to do. So let's hit OK and go into seeing what we can do. And there you could read the I am readiness, live stream data, freeze frame, fault codes, clear fault codes, test results, control operation of onboard components. Depending on the vehicle and the modules that you have, this unit may be able to control some modules. So it does have some bi-directional control. Very limited, but it does have some. So you can select exactly what you want to do. So let's read uh, some live data. Let me turn on the vehicle so we can read on some live data. All right, so let me pick something to read. Let's see on here, accelerator pedal. Let's do the accelerator pedal, airflow rate. Catalyst sensor one. And see, if you had a commanded EGR, you could work it through this. Commanded evaporative purge, you can control it through here. Engine RPM. All right, let's uh, take a look at these and see what it tells us. And you can see right there the functions that you want to look at. And on the side over here, you can see that you could record, report, combine, do all sorts of fun things with them. But if you just want to look at it numerically to compare to whatever the number is supposed to be on this function, you can do it that way. And let's combine some of these. And let's go with uh, airflow rate, catalyst temperature, and oh, maximum two. Okay, so you can only do two at a time. All right, let's do uh, these puppies right here. And then you get a graph showing you what each one is doing. And that's convenient right there if you're looking at something. Let's see if I accelerate. And you can see how each one will change. And you can see right there how the catalyst temperature is going up and the airflow goes up and down depending on the acceleration. So that's very useful right there to be able to see what the vehicle is doing and if it's performing properly. So that's a very neat, very good little graph right there. And you can see up at the top, you can monitor your battery level. Let's get out of here. And we're done with these guys. Let's exit out of here. And again, you can go back and pick whatever you want on there. And let's see, that's it for live data. All right, so I exited out back to the main screen. So now let's do some scanning. Let's try the scanner right there. And then you select your vehicle. And right here on the side, you can eliminate some of the other ones. So you don't need to scroll through a huge list. In this case, American. And you can see a lot of different ones. You see Ford Australia right there, which um, I don't have a Ford from Australia. I have a regular Ford. So we go up here and it starts connecting to the vehicle. And 
again, you can have it automatically search or manually search. You can see right there, it actually has Cummins, Caterpillar, diesel engine test specifications, all that kind of good stuff. So let's have it automatically search. And then you can do health report, system scan. Let's do a health report. There you go. The PCM, the RCM, everything is fine. No problem here. So let's see. Will it tell us more? Now oh, there you can go read fault code, clear fault code, read data stream. Let's see what data stream tells us. Wow, there's a whole lot of stuff on here you can check. There's a lot of stuff you can go through on here and check. See, the ECM controls a lot of things on your vehicle. A lot. I mean, this goes, look at that. Look how long this goes on. That goes to show you right there all the different functions that this monitor can check, this scanner can check on your vehicle. Look at all that. I'm not going to go through each and every one of those, but it just stands to show you that I can't do justice to this uh, scanner right here doing this video. It has so many things that you could check that it's unbelievable. So let's get out of that. Okay, here we are back out to the main screen. And I wanted to point out that I don't have any trouble codes in my vehicle, but if you did, and you're working on your vehicle, you want to know what's going on, all you do is go right in here into the repair info, go to the OBD fault code library up here, and then put in the code. Let's see, uh, P0114. Put in that code, see what it says. And it tells you right there. Intake air temperature sensor one circuit in intermittent. That tells you right there what you're dealing with, what the problem is, and how to proceed. So that gives you all the information right there, right when you're connected to your car. You don't need to move anywhere or go look it up on the internet or anything. Okay, guys, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I cannot do justice to all the functions that this scanner has built into it in this simple video. It would take me hours to go through and explain everything that this scanner can do. So the way I look at it is, if you're looking for a full-function OBD2 scanner that has limited bi-directional control and multiple system reset functions built in, I think this is a great scanner for the money. Very affordable, considering how much time, money, and aggravation this scanner can save you by not having to deal with a technician to diagnose your car. This one scanner gives you more control over your vehicle so you can perform more DIY maintenance and repairs without having to pay a dealer or a technician to do it for you. Check out the Amazon page for full details. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye for now.